Hello, Internet viewers. Uh, this is a continuation of my last video uh, where we're going to do this otter uh, in a swimming position. And what we're doing is we're going to, I'm going to take you from the blank I showed you that I cut out, which was this right here. And what we're going to do is start building onto this one. And I want to take this on a step-by-step -step basis so that you can see exactly how it's put together. And uh, we're going to, I'm going to also show you the tools that are used in, in doing the work so that you can follow along. Uh, again, I'm doing power carving, which is not using a knife and we shape everything with bits and I'm going to show you how to do that and the tools I use as well for it. So uh, we have a pattern here and from the pattern I've made the blank as I showed in the last episode and what I'm going to do now is to uh, continue on and show you how to mark this up so that we can proceed on. So. I'm going to tilt this a little bit more so that you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I usually get a ruler, and what I'll do is I'll get the middle of the head. I'll, I'll measure that, and I'll put a, a dot right in the middle of that distance from here to here on on the front end okay and then what I do is I come down through the body and I measure and I put a point there and I measure across and put another point there and I'll do that all the way down the body I'll measure across and find the middle and put a dot and then a dot I don't know if you can see that well, but I'm, I'm going to draw an arc, basically, throughout the whole otter. So I put a dot oh, about every inch or so along the way and at the end so that you, you have a guide to follow as we go. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start drawing a line. And it's sort of straight on the head, but then it starts bending slightly. And, it, and I'm just connecting the dots, basically. But it's more of not straight lines as much as it is like a little bit of an arc, because we're trying to get a, an actual arc out of here. And it sort of wiggles a little bit, because the tail is kicking over on one side and I'm going to get that in and this is what I'm trying to project here so from beginning to the end it's a straight line basically coming off the head and then it starts arcing throughout here all the way down through there now, I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. i got a straight line and dots all throughout on the bottom. So for the head, I try to come straight back. And when you're looking in on the head itself, I would like to see that straight line go straight on through. So when you're looking at it straight on, that you have one straight line going through the head just like this okay now after you do that we have the separation for uh, the legs that are going to come in here but right now what we're doing is just drawing the arc and we're following the dots like we did on the top view and I just keep on drawing that arc back and what I end up with is the exact same thing 
that we had on the top on the bottom. Like I said, it is straight through here, and it's straight all the way around, just on the head itself, just this portion up here. So, once we establish that, then what I'm going to do is shape the body, and we're going to round this over, and I'm going to show you how to do that, and then uh, I'm going to show you the tools first on how to do this. This is uh, the different bits I use, and uh, we're going to use bits like this. These are called Typhoon Bars, and uh, Fordham makes this, and uh, the blue is a finer cut, the red is a coarser cut, but they both cut very well. They'll really take a lot of wood out real fast. We use this for roughing out, and uh, we can get something fairly in shape in a pretty fast uh, period of time. So these are excellent uh, to use. Uh, this one here has a dome on the top, so if you're ever doing anything where you're trying to make a spoon or something like that, if you're doing other things other than birds and animals, you can get in and make a hollow or even on a piece that we're doing. Most of the time you're rounding though. And, and something like a, a barrel here is is excellent uh, for rounding as well. So it it doesn't have to always be a dome top. It could be a squared up top. Okay. And some of uh, the bits that are available, this is in a quarter inch shank, and I use this in my Fordhams, and I'm going to show you that just shortly. And this here. Uh, it needs a, a hand piece that will take the larger bits. These are quarter inch, and I'll show you how that goes. And they're also available in, in uh, other uh, sizes. You, have, you can get them in 3 seconds or an eighth inch, and they come the same way. And you can get them in different shapes. You can get them into a ball and stuff like that. And we utilize these different shapes on some pieces. Most of the time, uh, the barrel or the dome top, it works very nicely because you still have a barrel shape on these. And, and you can round things over just with a barrel. So I'm going to show you how that's done. This is what I was talking about. This is the square top. This is the round top. And again, they're typhoon burrs. They're tungsten carbide. They will last you a long time. Uh, they're very, uh, uh, they're great for getting rid of a lot of wood real fast. So, uh, trying to introduce you to the bits as we go. And then when I get into actual shaping, where uh, once we round this over and we get this into some decent shape uh, of just taking the corners off and things like that, because we just want to round it over. Uh, they get it to start looking like an otter and not something that's squared up, you know, and, and, and we want to get rid of the excess. So once we start going in, I usually recommend uh, a ruby carvers. And what these are, uh, this is impregnated ruby into these bits. And I predominantly use the pair for a lot of shaping. I'll go in and, and put the muscle tones in and uh, create uh, shapes and stuff like that, bring out the paws in this case here, do some of the facing. And then when I got to get really intricate into uh, the otter, and this is the same way with birds, uh, we'll use what they call a flame tip, which is just that. It looks like a flame. And what we'll do is we'll utilize this to get into to get the tighter areas, and I'll show you that as we go as well. Now, these are made from ruby, and they're excellent. They really hold up a, a long time. Uh, another choice you have is you could get the same thing in diamond. And that's what this is here. And diamond cuts a little faster than 
uh, the ruby, but I find that uh, the ruby is more forgiving in the beginning. If you haven't uh, had a feel for this, uh, it's it's. I think the ruby is great for uh, controlling the cut. Uh, if you have more experience and you feel more comfortable, the diamond does cut very nicely and and quickly and uh, it leaves the surface uh, a little more smoother and stuff like that. But they they do the exact same thing. Uh, if you have the experience, the diamond is great. If you don't, I, I always find the rubies more forgiving. And a lot of times when I'm doing something for the first time, I, I like to use the ruby because the rubies tend to uh, do the job and did not get me in trouble as much uh, and and then there are times uh, if we ever use a filler which I'm going to show you somewhere along the line here uh, where you you may have taken too much out we have what they call quick wood and I utilize that to fill in some of the areas I may have taken out that was too much and one of the things that uh, is nice with uh, the diamond is that uh, when it goes to cleaning these, if you get into the quick wood, it tends to grab onto your bits and, and really make them useless in the sense of the grit gets filled up. But uh, we have what they call whetstone, which you can run your bit through if you wet the stone. And it looks like a sugar cube block, and I'll show you that as well later. And uh, if it gets gummed up, you can just run this bit right through once, and it cleans it right up, and you're back in business. But you can't do that with the ruby. The ruby, it'll take the ruby right off. So it's just made for diamond bits. But it's a, 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 a excellent tool for um, taking uh, uh, for getting the bits back in shape, so you can keep on motoring on but uh, if you're ever using a filler or a putty or something like that that tends to get into your bits so I'm just trying to give you some education on, on the bits so you know along the way if you run across that there are ways of cleaning it another way too <coughs> excuse me is oven cleaner uh, you get some oven cleaner you spray it let it sit for a minute, get an old uh, uh, wire brush and, and just or a toothbrush and just brush it off and that should take it off. And if you've really got a problem where some of these bits get gummed up really good, you can put it in a jar with a lid on it and put a little bit of acetone in there. Let it sit overnight and then brush it out and it all comes right clean again. But these are just things to help you out along the way in case you run across situations like this. Uh, I don't recommend pine. Uh, this is a basswood blank, and I showed you about uh, uh, with, uh, I was showing you about when we made the pattern that I have an arrow on here that indicates uh, the grain, so you are you got the strength with it. And, and that is a, an ideal thing so uh, f to stay with the grain when you're uh, carving something because it gives you the strength where you may need it later if you went against the grain things could snap off and if you were trying to carve this with a knife you could probably do that as well uh, but uh, I find that power carving just is uh, so much nicer and easier uh, the one problem with uh, power carving is you create some dust, so you're limited to where you could be when you're doing it. And it's nice to have a dust collector if you have, or an area where you can make some dust and not have a problem. Uh, you, you, you wouldn't have to worry about the dust. So that's part of the system. The system some of the systems I have in my workshop here is I've, I've got setups where I have a vacuum that takes away the dust. I also have a, a dust collector or a portable one that I take around and that's nice too. Uh, one other thing I'm going to recommend 
along the way is uh, a mask. Uh, a dust mask is uh, very good. Uh, just like with our viruses going around and what have you, uh, wearing a mask uh, to, to stop the dust from going into your system is, is, is a smart way of doing things. So uh, I will try to uh, get you to use that as well as far as uh, for safety. But uh, some of the other bits that I use on this piece is, uh, this is like a bullet-shaped uh, diamond, and this is excellent. It's similar to the flame, and it's just a, what I, it's like what I call my bullet-shaped one. Uh, it's just uh, that. It gets you into the tight areas and it's great for shaping and stuff like that. So either one of these bits is very useful, but uh, you'll find that the pair does most of the work and this will get me into the tighter areas that I'm looking for where this is a little more uh, bulkier. This does usually the shaping for the body and what have you. And I'll show you as we go. And then I also have a bit like this, and it's like a flat, it's diamond, and it's got diamond on both sides, and I use that for texturing. And when we go to put fur on this uh, animal, the otter, uh, we will uh, use that bit, and, and we'll just, and I'll sh again show you how to do that. So uh, what I'm going to do is introduce you to some of the power tools I use, and here's one of them here, which is a Fordham, and it's usually a flexible shaft, and what I could do is dial up my speed here, or I can turn it on, or turn it off from here if I need to. This is a table model. You'll see most of the Fordhams uh, that are out there are hanging, so you would have a something hanging from your, uh, above, a chain or something that allows the, the Fordham to come down. And this happens to have a stand and it has a uh, wrist out on here to uh, control the speed. So I can turn this on and we can go higher or lower on the speed and we can also shut it off down here. Uh, the newer ones today, this is an older model and I, like I said, I've been carving for a number of years, so I have everything you can think of as far as the different equipment because I've taught so many. I, I still do have a lot of old uh, units here, and they work fine. They, they've been going for 30-some years, so just like myself. Uh, so, uh, excellent machine. Uh, I recommend the Fordhams highly. And if you're uh, ever in need uh, of any, uh, you can contact me, and uh, I could guide you through it. Uh, if you prefer to buy it from me, uh, that's fine, too. Uh, the other thing I use, and again, I've got older equipment. Oh, by the way, on, on here, this is the hand piece. And what you do is you get a pin and a wrench, and... I change out these bits here, and these bits will take the the quarter inch. Now this hand piece here is called a 44T, and you get three collets with it, which will take the smaller ones as well as the bigger ones, and it takes an eighth, a quarter, and a three thirty second. So. Uh, it, it, it's a very nice hand piece. I, l I prefer this hand piece for hogging and then uh, what I do is I gravitate to what they call these micro grinders uh, and Ram puts that out and that's this unit right here. This is a, again an older unit but I have new ones if anybody's looking for them. It goes up to 45,000 RPMs you turn it on here and then you could dial up your speed or you can lower the speed and it's, it's just like holding a pencil in your hand and you can just draw with it 
right on the wood. And it's, it's an excellent uh, item to have in your repertoire. Uh, as you see, I've got a million bits, and i got even more. Uh, we, use, we only use a handful of them. But there are going to be uh, bits that you prefer, and uh, uh, you uh, can always find something that you like. And, and everybody has their own favorites, but I'm going to teach you just on the general ones that I think are necessary. The other thing, the way this works here, as I showed you with the Fordham, that hand piece, it has a pin that goes in to a hole right up in here. And you put the pin in, and then you use your wrench to open it and take out a bit and put another one in and then tighten it up. Uh, this one here is the ram and this works this way you click towards yourself that releases the bit then you get another bit and you stick it in there and you click away from yourself as you're holding the back end and that gets it in place and then now the Fordham's are uh, more uh, has more power in the sense of uh, hogging things out and that means to take a lot off. These here are made for the detailing and uh, also uh, sanding and stuff like that and I'll show you some of them. This is a sanding bit on here now and uh, these are excellent though but it's, it's almost like if you just have a pencil in your hand and you're drawing or something like that you could basically do that with the bits. The bits are just phenomenal as far as uh, getting uh, the shapes of anything and even if you were doing like three-dimensional work or I should say two-dimensional in the sense uh, of uh, relief or something like that uh, I've done relief carving where I'll, I'll actually use the bit to, to hog out to take things out and and I sometimes use the Fordham, depending on how big the relief is. Uh, the Fordhams are excellent, but it's a bigger bit. So you have, you got to have an area to be able to navigate where with, with the, the, the rams you can get in there and, and just navigate around and you'd be surprised. You can literally write your name in wood and everything else. Uh, and it's uh, very flexible. So I'm going to, uh, Take a break here for a minute and then get back to you uh, and what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to get an apron on so I keep my dust off me and I'm also going to get a dust mask and then we're going to proceed by uh, starting to do some uh, what I call hocking which is taking a lot off on, on your uh, piece here and we will do that here very soon okay so uh, I just wanted to introduce you to some of the, the tools that I use and these are basically the ones I've, I do all my work with uh, I don't like to hog too too much with the rams because they're uh, it, you're just beating up this machine and, and and this is more you can do small birds and stuff like that and, you, and even with this it's not too too bad and you can use these hogging bits but I prefer to use the Fordham to do the, the bulk of the work as far as uh, getting the sh get it in shape and then I'll show you as we go uh, we'll get into uh, uh, the what's the name uh, the finishing of it and the shaping and, uh, and the detailing, the muscle tones and everything else that goes in. Uh, but uh, on the next video, what I'm going to do is get you into rounding this off. And uh, I would also uh, hope that uh, with this that you would... Uh, uh, Give me a like on 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 the on this program here, and like I said, I'm going to go on a step by step basis. And uh, if you could subscribe to the channel, I'd be grateful for that as well. And I'm going to try to uh, 
uh, take you nice and easy through everything we have here and uh, not rush you through it. And I, I'm sort of dragging a little bit, but I feel as though these are important things to know before you really get started. Uh, and it, it's, it's a learning process. And then from this, uh, I'll take you into how, to, what, how much to take off on the otter. And then once we get done, then uh, we'll, we'll, I'll start penciling some markings on. But usually what I'll do is I'll get the body rounded over somewhat in spots. And I also will we'll do some markings on here in pencil before we get started. Then what I'm going to do is go right for the head, as I mentioned in, in uh, my other videos. Uh, that, to me, once you get the body sort of rounded and you, you got the squareness out, then uh, you start in on the, on the head and uh, it, everything develops from the nose right on back. And I'll show you how to do that. So, uh, hope again that you would subscribe to my channel. And if you're uh, uh, interested in anything you may need, uh, definitely contact me. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, definitely uh, give me a holler, and I'll try to answer things as we go. Uh, if uh, you need anything at all uh, on this or recommendations, there are a lot of good books out. I do carry some of them, but uh, if need be, I can get you on the right track. So feel free to call me at any time. And, or contact me, I should say. And uh, we will see you on the next video. And we are going to start working on this, rounding it off. The equipment I just showed you is what we're going to be using. And uh, I'll take you on the next stage. Thank you very much.